Friday night, I want a chippy tea. Chippy tea, chippy tea, I want a chippy tea. Oh, you keep giving me posh, no, she don't agree with me. I don't want lobster thermidor with a raspberry coulee. It's Friday night, I'm within me rights, I want a chippy tea. Is it Foxy? It's Foxy. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> we finally made it. How are you naysayers? So, here we go. Welcome to the Chippy Tea Podcast. What is the Chippy Tea Podcast? It is your chance, your opportunity to catch up with uh, me, Tony P, and Danny Day from Flip Street Print Co. There you go. As we catch up on a video call uh, once a week to generally discuss what we've been going through in the world of screen printing. Um, it's not limited to screen print. There's a little bit of um, tangent hopping as we go along onto subject, onto different subjects. But um, this is your chance to catch up with us as we go through, dissect and pull apart the week that we've had um, in screen print. So. Yeah. This is number 40, episode 40. Yeah. And, uh, we think we get this far, did we? But here we are at number 40. And what I'll do first is throw it straight over to you, Mr. Danny. What have you been doing this week? Well, it's caught me out a little bit this week because it's a short week. Bank um, holiday. Bank holiday. And, and I, don't, I don't usually have bank holidays off. I'm usually pretty oblivious to bank holidays. The only mm. time I find out about a bank holiday is when somebody says, hang on, Mike, my stuff turned up on Monday. Yeah. Or, or whatever. And I'm like, oh, shit, I've got to get it out by Wednesday or whatever. And when you realise uh, Friday's not a working day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So usually I sort of use it as an, uh, uh, just just come in and print without any pressure to get, you know, get stuff packaged up and ready for courier to come and pick up. Mm. But um, I went to a gym on Saturday. <laughs> I, uh, it's a new, new gym I've never been to before. And I thought, oh, got all these nice shiny new machines. Mm. And I thought, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a right good leg session. <laughs> and basically, I uh, no, you pulled a muscle walk. in my groin. <laughs> I, spent, <laughs> I spent two days in bed, to be honest. Yeah, well, so, yeah. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, I were a complete write off. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, the printing yeah. endeavours so far this week have been pretty. Uh, I've only really just got to the press today. I only just sort of got cracking today. Is that when um, you've been away from that press for three days? Pretty much, yeah. That's, How did that feel? Slightly unheard of. Well, <laughs> I'm, I took advantage of the time, got my laptop out, and I uh, I did some website work. Right. Uh, website work and social media work. And actually, to be honest, I'm pretty happy that I did because I found something in my website that... So from 2016, so if, if you've got a website, you'll have um, a page within your website called a sitemap. Uh, you might not know about it, but it's if you've got like a website web builder, they typically do it for you in background. Yeah. Uh, but with WordPress, it's um, something you have to do manually unless that, you get that's an add-on. chance to slag off my GoDaddy or whatever it is. And oh. you, didn't, you didn't go for it, but I, you know, I'll let you. No, I'm a, I'm a kind-hearted soul. <laughs> I would never do that to you, Tony. <laughs> but um, one day I'm going to redo your website for you. Yeah, yeah. Free yeah. of charge. <laughs> maybe 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 a Guinness and Black will do. But, uh, I'm going to redo it for you. But anyway, yeah, so it turned out my sitemap I've not updated since 2016. So over these years, I've put a lot of effort into my website and rejigged things and retweaked things and upgraded it and rewrote descriptions and keywords, etc., etc., etc. And I've kind of realised it's been absolutely pointless because Google. Basically, so your site map basically said to Google, this is what pages are on this website. Now you need to look at them and rank them. You know, All you right. have to put them in, in, you know, in Google in whatever order you think is appropriate based on the content within these pages. And the first point, the first part of call, if that's what it's it's the site map. is the site map. And that mm. gives you a break now. And uh, mine's not updated since 2016. So Google thinks my website is terribly out of date. Mm. So... Anyway, so that was a bit of a eye-opening discovery, which I'm hoping will have a very, very positive effect going forward because I've updated it and there's so many changes for Google to now work through. I'm hoping my website will become quite a powerful tool for get, for bringing in orders now. 
Uh, is, is it now? Are you word of mouth or website? What 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 drives people to flipping sweet? It's a it's a bit of both. Um, website definitely. I get I get quotes through the website. Um, it's hard to know if somebody has said, "Oh, go," you know, get in touch with get in touch with flipping sweet, and they found the website that way, or if mm. it's just ranked. If they've just been looking for t shirt printing, and uh, you know, flipping sweets popped up. Um, but it you does generate. Off. Do I what? You pay anything to be top at list? No, 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 no. Um, I've, I've dabbled in it years and years and years ago. It's one of those things where. You have to put a chunk in. You have to put a good chunk in just to experiment. Mm. So you can pay a ton of money up front for pay-per-click. Um, and if you don't, you're not going to get it right first time. Nobody does. It's not even possible. The experts can guesstimate, you know, what keywords to use and certain tactics and phrases, etc., in your in your ads. Um, but even then, they have to spend months tweaking it to make it effective which just costs money and money and money and money and money. And I can imagine T-shirt printing is quite a competitive market. So those clicks, we're not talking 50p. If you want no. to actually get valuable clicks that pay you back, you probably have to spend, you know, pounds, multiple pounds to get anything in return. Mm-hmm. So I have dabbled. Um, would I go back to it in future? Maybe. But I'm hoping I won't eat her. I'm hoping yeah. I might have... Uh, I might have found, might have pulled the plug, and now it's all going to come. All the sales are going to come flooding in. You broke down the dam now, and and everything's just going to come flooding in. Yeah, because yeah. Because yeah. I've, I've, I've always natural wondered. Search, natural ops, ops yeah, so I, basically, yeah, so basically, my op, my organic reach should be uh, much much improved now. Mm. Um, since since updating the site map, but also I've been making changes and updates, etc., to the website to uh, just make it a bit more SEO-friendly. Yeah. So, with a bit of luck, that'll do the, uh, that'll do the trick. I've got the last one off will... the list, isn't it? Well, it's a never-ending project. Our bloody website, trouble is I build my own website, and I, you know, I'll never be satisfied. Mm. So it'll always be an ongoing project that, you know, lasts forever. Um. But it takes an awful lot of time to do. It's quite a labour-intensive task, and finding finding hours to sit and make one web page, or to just even tweak one web page, it's usually Christmas. <laughs> you yeah. know, it's just like little uh, weeks off or whatever. You're too busy earning money. In theory. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so print-wise, on press today, I got cracking. Do you know what? It's weird. It's been, I've got a week fully booked up of a particular niche, which for a lot of years I avoided. And we sort of talked about finding a niche, didn't we? Hmm. And it could be that I'm sort of getting dragged into this niche <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> I won't say that I don't want to be in it, but at the time I, did, I definitely didn't. So I've got on press CrossFit T-shirts, Gym t-shirts, um, powerlifting t-shirts. Now, obviously, yeah. I like the strongman stuff, so I don't mind that one. But the fitness and gym niche, it's polyester. In general. Well, there's a lot. Some of it's polyester. Some of it's tri blends. A lot. Of, to be honest, the majority of it's tri blend. They like the tri blend feel. How are you approaching it? What ink are you using? Aquaflex is always for base whites. Um, not all of it has needed a blocker. I have got an I've got a Magna blocker, the grey one. I've not tried the black one yet. That'd be interesting. The black one's to... good. My anti-migration bits. Well, migration what, what is bits. the difference between black and grey? What are the, what what do you gain from using either one? Well, I haven't seen Magna's grey one, um, but I've been known to make a grey one from Aquaflex and migration blocker together. Ah. And what that gives me is a lighter grey. So. If I'm using like a, a yellow on top of a base, yeah. sometimes you can see that dark black through it. Yeah. And so you have to almost use two bases. Yeah, not So either. if I can tint the the grey or tint the black to be a, a sort of like a, a 
cool gray five six yeah uh, if i can get to that sort of level i can get away with just dropping one white on top of it or one yellow on top of it ah so i don't have to use that second screen now for you it's just another pull for me it would be another screen so yeah i would have to go uh blocker flash white flash white flash color yeah so that's four screens i can take one of those screens away if i drop aquaflex into um the the anti-migration base now massive disclaimer always check the wash test first magna will say don't do it um i've had good so, results with it so they see the science behind that you almost explained to me the science of die block now i'm gonna get i'm gonna get this probably gonna get it wrong like a load of straws <laughs> that's how i describe it yeah and um I, I, if you find someone who's um exceptionally scientifically technical with ink they'll probably say that's bollocks tony but this is the best <laughs> visual way i can describe what's happening and yeah. that is a bunch of straws all vertical and you've got your shirt at the bottom with a polyester dye and visual eye at the top and the gas is released from the polyester dye at 140 degrees that gas then works its way up the straws and if mm. we can stop it before it gets to the top we don't see it yeah so the whole point of a dye blocker dye blocker in a white ink is a uh, the blockages in the tube they're just big obstacles inside the straw and the gas has got to go around it and it takes ages so we've got a time limit before we can get it cool again and we don't see it come out the top with um with the gray bases and the m migration blockers they've actually got carbon in and yeah they're quite gritty aren't they they have so is, is... physical soot, physical carbon in there so that's a carbon filter in the same way a charcoal filter in odor eaters charcoal filters anywhere in a, you know in a cooking environment to, to basically get rid of any smells charcoal stops the smells because it it, blo it captures the little particles it stops them getting through and the charcoal in the ink stops the gas particles that have got the dye in them passing through so one a dye blocker will slow it yeah and an anti-migration base or a charcoal blocker will actually physically create a barrier create a barrier so this is this is why i was asking about science so when you mentioned that you were adding aquaflex white into the black dye blocker yeah my first thought was those particles that block the tubes are you not spreading them out yeah you're making them thinner there's less of them yeah so there's, there's a danger then that you might get yeah i guess you're doing it you, you, you I guess gambling. you're choosing to do it on certain fabrics, lighter yeah, you're fabrics. Gambling. Yeah, you're weakening the charcoalness of it, if you like, if that's not a real word. But you're, we you're weakening that that bit. So you know, instead of having 100% charcoal in there, you're you're putting 50/50, cutting it 50/50, and you now only got 50% charcoal in there, which you're hoping is going to be enough. I used to do it. I say what I used to do it with, and I will always still do it with um, plastic on. So with, right. with Plastisol, I'll take a low bleed white. Uh, famously, it used to be LBO21, which is a Seracol product, uh, which they would sell to you in a 10-litre tub. Uh, yeah. There's only five litres of ink. All right. Is it like an oil? <laughs> no, somebody at some point found out that uh, the, the, the part that the... the the part of the ink, the, 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 the sector of the ink that was associated with dye blockers um but not the not the charcoal ones just the physical lumpy stuff yeah expanded over time oh all right so, so if you've ever opened a low there. bleed and it, and it looks like uh like a bread mixture that's proving and it's giving, <laughs> yeah. off, giving off little oxygen bubbles and little bubbles yeah it's a bit i don't know what you mean yeah um, i've seen that well the the first batch all went into five liter tubs and while it's on the loading bay pop pop Pop, pop, and they oh. all popped off. So Flipping now they sell five litres in a 10 litre tub. So it's got five litres of air in which to expand and, and, and physically just, just make itself bigger. It becomes like spongy. And so it doesn't blow the lid off. Well, what that meant was my white came in a tub with 
half the space empty. So I would yeah. take a tub of Armour Grey and drop that into my um, my LBO21 and mix it all up with an electric paddle mixer. And that gave me my perfect sort of underbase, which was printable um, and meant that I didn't need an extra screen. I could put the grey down and then a top white on top, and that was bright enough. Whereas if I used the really dark black grey, then I, I would have to put a white and then another white on top of that. That makes sense. So I, I always used to cut it 50-50. And I gave that advice to somebody not long ago, and I'm, I, all, that, all the way through that story, I've been trying to rack my brain, so it was. Oh, it was. But they say it's taken, um, it's taken a screen off for them, and they do it all the time. It was in America, a big place in America. And um, yeah. they say they do it all the time now. That's their, that's their standard base that they use on almost everything because they got caught out with some Gildans that weren't supposed to bleed. But of course, they're Gildans, so they did. Mm. <laughs> and um, I still get caught out sometimes. People ring me up and say, Tony, I'm getting dye migration. It's all right, well, it's the polyester dye. It's this, this, oh, 100% cotton, I'm still getting dye migration. Yeah. Yeah. And I get I get caught out with it sometimes, and, and I don't understand the science of it enough. But all I can imagine, I've had some 100% cotton, poor quality sweats, and they gave me dark spots all over. I was putting them in yellow, and it looked great. Right. And next day I had these dark spots, and that was in the dyeing process. <sighs> They'd been dyed in a, in a far eastern country that, that was skipped to process. So uh, they looked for fine. Corners. They felt fine. Everything about them was good. But if you put them in the washing machine, that's when the final process of the, all that dye started coming out. So they'd not done the final rinse, if you like, or setting, they used to call it. Bugger. So that's I the only some... time I get cotton that gives me a problem when I'm printing onto it is because the dye's not been set or finished properly. I did some shirts not too long ago, and... Only the smalls migrated. <laughs> so I did an entire run. I think it was like 50 shirts or something. And uh, start. I always start big and work my way down to small because when, when they come out of the dryer, they stack. I was like, my way around. Anyway, whatever. I would... <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> Excel. Yeah, no, that is right. Start with Excel. Yeah, that is right. I'll start with the big shirts. Yeah. Because then they go through the dye first, fall in the bucket. Then you and put then the when I pull back out. Post. No, it's the other way around, isn't it? <laughs> Scrap that bit. What was it? What, what, what was my original point? I fucking I properly shot myself in foot there. Talked you bollocks did, you did and some, lost my original you did some point. Shirts. What I was trying to say was a print the largest to smallest shirts and then at the end of a dryer our jade catches them and stacks them largest to smallest so that the stack would be in the correct order but for some reason I had a bit of a brain fart you did some shirts and only the small migrated yeah, yeah that's right so I did some shirts <laughs> 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 I don't even scream, I just make it up. <laughs> uh, um, Reminds me of early days when we used to go off on tangents non-stop, and I used to have to drag you back. As we go through middle stage, I stop bringing you back and just let you go. <laughs> and then as we get to end, I start going off on tangents. <laughs> it's just like the natural form of things now. <laughs> I mean, yeah, so not much, only not small, I can say on that story, to be honest. It was just yeah. the smalls. I mean, I did about 50 shirts, it was a navy shirt. It was a tri-blend for, oh, this is a bit dodgy. I want to try Aquaflex white as a base. Hope it looks, all, well, see if it looks all right. Looked, looked, looked totally fine on the totally. big shirts. <laughs> looked totally great on the big shirts. And then, so I thought, oh, if this is fine, crack on. And then next day, only the smalls had migrated. Yeah, sometimes they're from a different it. factory. Uh, uh, you, yeah, I bet it's from you, you have to look factory, it, You have to look at label it back and say, oh, these were from Honduras and, and these were from Bangladesh. 
and you know one of the factories skipped a process somewhere and hoping to get away with it right so here's a question for you right let's just pretend palm print print co is in existence and your inbox is full of emails uh full of people asking for quotes i mean you've got a, you've got a, a lump of people who are, who are happy to follow your lead and go for high quality garments and you know take your advice and they don't want they want a good quality a good quality printed shirt but then the other half are full of people who are like oh i just want the cheapest to chuck it on gildan or oh, cheap 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 what would you do with them would you take them on would you do them I, I'm of the, the old school that all work is work. Um, yeah. I, I'm not – I don't think I've ever been at the point of luxury of being able to turn away to work. To say no, yeah. Um, I think it's a it's a personality trait, sort of a bit of a people-pleaser personality trait. But um, it's also a you – know, you never know if this is your last job. So you, you've got to take it. Even, yeah. if it's, even if it's crap, you've got to make, a, make it work because you just don't know if this is, if this is your last one. Uh, and I know, I know that sucks sometimes. Uh, and and if you spoke to a a business expert, they'd probably say, oh, you've got to do the 80-20 rule and you've got to do the 80-20. You've got to shut your door to customers and, and just focus on being a social media star and all that shit. But um, <laughs> as it, as it started, Start a podcast. <laughs> start a podcast, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what would you call it? I'd call it, I've only got a fucking cruiser. <laughs> <laughs> Shots fired. And ink. <laughs> so, so I yeah, can I, get some. <laughs> I, uh, I didn't, um, I, I just try and do everything as much as I possibly could and try and work on a first come first serve basis. Yeah, you, it, I'm not even. I haven't got that luxury. So I've, I had a job coming the other day, and it wore um, twenty t-shirts, a yellow logo on black shirts, and the first they said their um, their criteria was medium to heavyweight shirts. So I gave them a gave them a list of um, a couple of AS color examples, a couple of Stanley Stella examples, a couple of Continental Stan, uh, examples, three different price ranges. All of them above Gildan level. Yeah. Um, and he was like, nah, I just want cheapest you can get. And I was like, oh. And uh, so I, I quoted him up on Gildan's, etc. I'm not heard back yet, but it's a bit, it's a bit disheartening because you know it's going to look crap. Because yeah. you, like, like you discovered at the show, you printed <laughs> your great CMYK on black. And it yeah. looked mega on the, you know, the, the quality shirt. Mm. And then you tried it on a cheaper, cheaper garment. And yeah. the, the difference was, you know, you could see, I, I could see it on a webcam. We, we could see the difference, yeah. Yeah, we could, we could definitely see the difference. Yeah. But like you say, I got to make money. Commercially acceptable, yeah. It's strange you mention AS Colour. I've just been speaking to somebody over in Canada, and that's their shirt of choice, the AS Colour. Um, I it's, don't see it much, but it's um, it seems to be gaining ground as a, a lot of traction. Isn't it? Yeah, um, they, they they swear by it. Almost everything's AS color. In fact, they went to far as to say that uh, AS color is the reason that their company has been successful. Somebody, uh, oh fuck, I've got his name now. Somebody, um, Sam. Oh, no, not somebody. Oh, yes, Sam. Can. Oh, so Sam actually told me that um, in Australia <laughs> <laughs> that was smooth, wasn't it? Fuck off, man! <laughs> Try to be professional here. <laughs> You'd be better than me. <laughs> <laughs> right. I don't know why we're trying. I mean, I don't know why I'm trying so hard to be professional today. Not like we normally do. So Sam. For Ministry of, is it Ministry of Print or Shirts? Or ministry, ministry of Shirts. I always or get it mixed up. Or yeah. Ministry of Sound. Can't remember which it is. It's not it? Ministry of Sound. That's that's BBC. Anyway, <laughs> um, so he, he would tell me that actually, Ace Colour is almost their 
or maybe it even is. It's Ver Gilden. In Australia, AS Colour is V Gilden. Oh, right, it's the cheap and nasty one. <laughs> well, no, no, I didn't mean that. I just meant it's like the... <laughs> it's the most common, the standard shirt that most people go for. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't, mean, I didn't mean shit. <laughs> <laughs> I was surprised to hear it all the way over in Canada, but um, pleased as well. You know, it's nice, yeah. to, nice to see it going that far. Mm. Yes, yeah, I think it's European, isn't it? Like... Aust- Australia, and then they hit Europe about two or three years ago um, yeah. to try and get, you know, a foothold in Europe and give Stanley Stella a run for the money. Oh, I thought it was Aust- I thought it was a European company. No, it's an Australian company as far as, as, far oh, as I, I never know, knew that. Well, that's company. probably why it's, why it's V-shirt in Australia then. That's yeah. probably why. No, it's an Australian I'm, I'm pretty sure it's an Australian company. They're uh, doing good in Canada. I've had a catch up this this week with a a client that um taught to print by Zoom. Oh wow! And, uh, and trying to get a visit organised is very very difficult because he's in the ass end of nowhere. Um, you know, when he's busy, he don't want a visit. But when he's quiet, he can't afford a visit. <laughs> yeah, I can, I can, it's the I can age old that. the age old issue. Uh, it's that bloody seesaw, isn't it? You just can yeah. never get off of it. We're, we're, we're trying to work our way around it. A bit of time in Canada when it's not fucking snowing. How do you find how do you find teaching over Zoom? Because it must be a lot harder. It all depends on the other person. You can't spot things, can you? It depends on the other person on the other side. Um, if they're willing to to listen and and carry out, then it's not bad. I, I always I don't know you watch. Um, <laughs> What was Big Bang Theory? And, and I've was, seen it. I'm yeah, not a fan there was of an it episode all. where where Sheldon was just walking on a, a robot and, a, and an iPad, <laughs> and I just envisaged myself in this shop, <laughs> this, <laughs> this Segway with a <laughs> with an iPad sellotape to it, brown tape, because he's a printer, <laughs> wandering around the shop looking at screens, um, <laughs> but. Um, I, I'm okay with it. I'm all right with it. Um, you, you can't be feet on the floor. You really can't. There's no substitute. But no. Um, he bought his press and then COVID hit. I was supposed to be there on the install of his press, but COVID hit. And um, as I remember rightly, even the technician had to get special dispensation to, to cross the border and, and fit it. And I couldn't get in. The bars were shut. The no gates, chance. Were, gates were firmly down by then. I'm going to say, I think Canada were pretty strict, weren't they? Australia yeah, Canada and, and America, yeah. So, um, most of our teaching has been done like that, but he's he's been very successful. He's been very successful. Next stage now is growth. You know, how do we how do we teach? How do we transfer what's in his head now into somebody else's? And this is where um, uh, SOPs, standard operating procedures. Um, set methods of performing a task is is um, where he's at now a drop in the ocean of where he could be yes <laughs> oh good guess oh no 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 i know what you're thinking oh, shit. no no it's not no <laughs> that was a metaphor for who i thought no. it might be but never mind no drop in the ocean i think you're thinking of somebody in holland but i don't have from canada who teal Teal green. Netherlands. Oh. Never know what to call them Dutch or Hollandish. <laughs> In that, Dutchy. 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 Dutchish. I'd love to, I, you know, I have to move to that country. Holland. Oh, it's, it's really nice. It's it nice is really, it. really nice. Um, mm. It's just, there's a nice feel about that country. It's the fact. I think they've got a lot of things right, you know, yeah. infrastructure-wise. Yeah. The amount of people that travel on a bike, and I'm not a, I'm not a cyclist at all. I, I, honestly, I'd kill myself on a bike. I really <laughs> But over there, it's very safe. It's yeah, very, well, uh, you know, they have their own traffic lights just for yeah, bikes. Yeah. Well, I heard, I don't know how true this is, but in Netherlands, every road has a cycle lane. Yeah. It's not just like the odd area like no. we have over here. It's like literally every road has its own And it's not just lane. a lane. You know, it's a fully planned out with giveaways, with traffic signs, with crossings, with, indi- you know, it's a whole planned out area. 
makes it really, mm. really easy to cycle anywhere. And to cycle to yeah. a train station. You can tell when you're in you're in the Netherlands. You go to the train station and there's just a sea of bikes, <laughs> bikes everywhere. Just parked up. Because you know, public transport is is really well invested and therefore it works and it's not too expensive. Mm. But you know, we're screwed with public transport here, really. I can probably get to I bet I can get to Milan cheaper than I can get to London. <sighs> Yeah, I mean, the only thing I can relate to is F1 tickets. It's cheaper for me to go to Monza, uh, the Dutch GP, France, anywhere, like probably probably even maybe in Australia, but <laughs> it's like probably not far off. I bet you're not far off, yeah. If, not, if you can Las even Vegas, get though. tickets now, not Las Vegas. I won't go. Have you ever been to Vegas? Yeah. Have you? Yeah, yeah. We don't, yeah. I, I, you can't tell me any stories about Vegas, can you? It very, what, very what happens nearly, in Vegas stays in Vegas. It very nearly finished me. It very, I went yeah. three days that was just oh, hard work. That's where we fit uh, an MHM into somebody's double garage. Oh, that'd be lovely, that, wouldn't it? Wouldn't that be a dream scenario? I'd be happy with that. Yeah. I could live with that. Double garage attached to the house. Yeah. And um, got an MHM in there. <laughs> I'd be really, I'd be really happy with that. I'm comfy at that little, level. Little six color X type. Still going strong. Move now. Um, there's not a prayer who listens to this. So uh, what's it called? Arving, Mister Las Vegas. Uh, Mister Las Vegas. Does he wear gigs? Some gigs. Oh, all the I'm time. Of someone else. <laughs> uh, you know, I've forgotten what he's called. Spot on, no. That's going to bug me, but I'll get back to that. <laughs> um, yeah, he does, does really well. Uh, got, a, got a proper unit now, moved everything to a proper unit, got some embroidery as well, does a few stickers. It, really, really good. Um, good little, never stops working. Um, it's difficult finding an opportunity to do something like that and then having the absolute tenacity to never give in. Just keep fucking going. But it happens so quickly in other countries. It seems to take years in England. It seems we, to take decades. Yeah. Well, we talked about this in pub, didn't we? Yeah. And I sort of, I was saying now, we were saying now the effort and the work, my, my work effort and the effort and the dedication and determination I've put into just, just trying to make something out of it. If I'd have done it somewhere else, I'm, I'm pretty sure I would have, you know, gotten somewhere way above you'd have what an I have now. Yeah, you'd have had an auto yeah, shop by now. Hands down, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. 100%. And, uh, and I don't know what that is. I, land it, of opportunity, it, isn't it? Well, this is what we discussed over a, over a beer. Um, There's a higher population. There's a different attitude. I don't I know. Like I, I don't know where they get the money from, because we have to borrow. Easier finance, I imagine. And maybe that's the only thing I can think of, is that, you know, at, at 22, 23 years old, you've got no problem walking into a bank and, and borrowing... Three or four hundred grand to start a business because well, you know, all, somebody's well, going to invest in you, somebody's going to be behind you. Oh, they've all got rich parents. <laughs> well, there's that in there. I mean, we've oh, got listeners. Drug dealers. <laughs> oh, drug dealers, yeah. Um, we've got listeners in America. Like, why don't you tell us how easy? Let's just pretend you've just come straight out of college, uh, high school, college, whatever you call it over there, uh, early 20s. How easy would it be for you to go to a bank and get, I don't know, Hundred grand to get an all singing shop, you know, just just to go all at it. And I'm actually, no, that's not really fair. That's not fair level field. Maybe not hundred grand, but how easy? I mean, for me, twenty two, I couldn't have got two grand. I no. couldn't have got two grand out of the bank. Over here, people Never want mind hundred grand. We, we we can't. We have to prove um, a method of paying it back. We have to prove that we are reliable and. Yeah, crazily, the rent thing, you know, if you've been paying rent for the last 20 years at £1,000 a month, then you go to the bank to borrow £1,000 a month, they'll go, no, we can't do it. Why? Because no. you, you won't be able to pay it back. I've been paying it for the last 20 years. Yeah. yeah. Don't care. Even being self-employed, self-employed is just a massive no-no to banks. You've like <laughs> basically, yeah. basically shooting myself in the foot by being self-employed. You're a risk. So they, yeah, I'm a high risk. But throughout COVID, how many people lost their jobs? But I, through sheer will and determination, 
got my business through it and came out mm. the other side because it means that much to me. But a job's a job, isn't it? You just go find another job. Yeah. So, like, a bank should look at me and say, if we're going to lend money to anybody, I'm, you know, that money, I'm going to take to my last breath, make sure that it gets paid back and it works for me. You know what I mean? So, mm. yeah. but it just doesn't work like that. Common yeah, sense. Not, over here. not, not over that here. good at it already, are we? <laughs> no. <laughs> we used to be. You used to be able to borrow money, but uh, no dive block. So dive blocker, yeah. I never get to that. Put <laughs> <laughs> some dive blocker in your white. Mix it up with the ledger paddle. You'll be fine. It'd be right. Be right. <laughs> no, we were talking. I think we will pass that. We we're talking about. Oh God. Process. Struggling now. Standing standard operating procedures. Let's get back onto that. SOP, really standard lacking. operating procedures. Um, somebody asked me to write them some standard operating procedures, um, and I can't uh, because I can do generic standard operating procedures, but you might as well just go to the the um, company's website. CPT? You might as well go to the company's <laughs> website that you're buying the stuff from, and there's a standard operating procedure there. What you've got yeah. to do is you've got to tailor it to you. So, you know, yeah, so your standard great. operating procedure is go downstairs, get a screen, run upstairs, make a screen, go downstairs, get another screen, go upstairs, make a screen, go downstairs, wash that screen out, yeah. go upstairs, go downstairs because you forgot to pick the screen, go back upstairs again. <laughs> is that go idea? back, post, expose it. <laughs> yeah. So you've got all this, you know, it, it's very it's very uh, unique to the place. Um, yeah. I like standard operating procedures. I don't like writing them. Uh, they've got to be very particular to that place because everybody's different. Everybody does things differently, even though in the grand scheme of things, we all shoving through holes onto T-shirts. Um, we all do things slightly differently because of the layout of the shop, because of the chemicals we use, because of the equipment we bought. You know, a standard operating procedure for you wouldn't work at merch shops. No. Because they've got a machine that does the cleaning. Yeah. They've got a, a machine that screen, cleans the squeegees. You know, they've got um, everything you could possibly wish for, basically. Hi, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, that. so I couldn't, we couldn't take that sort of like their operating procedure and give it to you. Because you no. are now no. going to have to scrub the screens, get your magic eraser out, inspect them. Where? Yeah. It's all dark. They come outside. <laughs> you know, everywhere's unique. But everyone yeah. needs to do it, I think. I'm a big believer in, in standardising a procedure uh, and, and documenting it and having access to it. So what do you do? Get like a, a port, what do we call them, a little file, a little file with just pages of operating procedure? Or do you have it stuck up on wall near each Usually it's section. laminated on wall normally. But mm. lately with new technology, it's QR coded. Yeah, yeah. So a new operator comes in and there's a QR code at the side of the stencil strip. And mm. if you've forgotten, you just hold your phone to it, phone. takes you to the little website page where you've written your your standard operating procedure. Uh, who is it just that? The guy up in Canada. Um, Corey? Corey, yeah. He does that. I think he's a few really, have adopted it now, but he's he really good at saw. that. Yeah. He's, uh, yeah. And I think King's Green do it as well. Um, yeah. I, I like the QR code. Don't understand don't. it enough. Can't, can't generate them, but I'm sure there's lots of things where you just generate it's quite them quite simple on, uh, on Monday. You can get like a little add-on, do it on Monday. Yeah. I mean, it's like, well, you can do, I think you can have, I think there's a piece of soft, software, like a website called Zapier, I think it's called. Hmm. And that'll, that also, Zapier's like a middleman. And if one app wants to talk to another app, Zapier translates it. And you can combine lots of different apps. So you can have like MailChimp and monday working in you know and you can set different uh tasks and stuff like that so i set up the qr code to uh do a do a stock check so mm. you know i've got a row of uh, stencil stripper bottles and a row of uh the de- deasa and i can pull up my phone scan it and say oh there's only six left and then monday they'll track it and monday will say oh you're running low on this I mean, I can order it, which oh, is, good. to me, totally overkill. But I was just sort of doing it over Christmas because I felt like I wanted to do it. 
I, I quite like that. I quite, I quite, uh, I love to automate stuff like that. Um, recently, I've been playing with a little bit of Chat GPT and a little bit of uh, automation inside Adobe Illustrator. <sighs> yeah. About ten years ago now, you can automate Illustrator to perform a task for you. Yeah. So you can write an instruction in JavaScript, which will perform a task. And the reason I looked into this was I used to do the artwork at a place and I found I was doing the same thing over and over and over and over again. And this yeah. was creating a visual. So creating a visual, basically you take the logo, reduce it to fit, type in the pantones. And it was the typing of the pantones that did my boxing. So I thought, well, there must be a way to automatically. The, the pantones are there. They have a yeah. label on them. I want to steal that label and put it on my artboard. How can I do that? And, and when I looked into it, it was relatively simple. Um, I a up... macro? <laughs> a macro is a set of recorded actions. Yeah, you'll do so you, it. So you Press can do, do it. Yeah, I mean, you can, you can do that in Photoshop and you can do that in Illustrator. But I'm talking about an intelligent set of actions. So, right. I can get Illustrator to open a new page, draw me a rectangle, colour it in with the um, colours used in the artwork that's on the artboard, and then at the top of the page, across the top, write me the Pantone numbers in their Pantone colour so that when I Ooh, print my that. separations, everything's labelled up. Yeah, I can go to so, put the press, the registration marks on and the file name because that's what I populate on my on my output when I was outputting to film. I take mm. my art, and first of all, I'd separate it into separated colours. If it didn't come like that, nice and easy, nice and simple. Then creating a base white. I found that creating a base white was the same set of actions. So I created a set of actions to create a base white. It worked ninety nine percent of the time. Yeah. Only when things weren't joined properly, bad artwork basically. Um, yeah. So that worked. And then it was like, right, okay, well, if I've got a four color design, I've got to type four boxes across the top with the labels on. So yeah. I found a script online. I do that today, to this day. The, the script is awesome. And it just looks at whatever's in there, bing, 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 done, and labels sure. everything for you. And, and then I gave this to um, a young girl that's separating uh, in, in a shop in Leicester. And I gave it to her for free because, you know, why not? I should, should make money on them, really. I should put it on my website and say, download this, shouldn't I, really? But... Call her the beta tester. Yeah. And then um, put it on for, for money. So she loved it. Thought it was great. Anyway, one day it stopped working. Illustrated updated. Um, Mac had changed to PC and, and oh, other way around. And she rang me up. Was, it's not working, Tony. And went, I don't care. <laughs> she went, it's not working. You're, you're bad, okay. Which is something yeah, I gave to you for free. I honestly don't care. Yeah. But, but, but I use it every day. It was just something I had knocking around for the, this 10 year old. That's why it doesn't work. It's a 10 year old script. It wants to get it. You know, Illustrator is now CC. There's all sorts of different things. So even JavaScript has probably changed a little bit. Or can you write it again? No. But, but, but oh. I, need it. I use it all the time. If I don't. I don't use it anymore. I don't do that job anymore. So it's completely off my radar. What, what, what can I do? You can pay somebody else if you want. I don't know where to start. So I asked ChatGPT if it could write me a script. and Write you a full script? It did. A JavaScript? Yeah. With it understood tell. Illustrator. <laughs> it understood all the terminology I used. And within about 10 seconds, I've got a fully working script again. That's outrageous. And all it does, <laughs> all, it, it's a nice and simple script. All it does is populate the top of the artboard with the colors that are used in the design. Only the colors that are used in the design. Outrageous. <laughs> so, I, do you know what? For, for, for first, once I sort of discovered this chat, I think you brought it up. I think you told me about it. Or we... Yeah, just right up in one day, and uh, with, and I've been. Mean, I think it's. I think everybody on planet's using it at the minute because it's like, whoa, this is crazy. First thing I thought of it. The thing is, the more people we... use it, the cleverer it gets. 
It is yeah, no, so that's what you do, I'm, I'm a massive sci-fi fan, right? Okay, I have been listening to, <laughs> watching, and reading science fiction since I was about 14. And they all include some sort of AI. And up yeah. until now, How? it's, <laughs> yeah, it, from how onwards. And up until now, it's been completely fiction, completely unbelievable. We would never go down that route. We are so clever. We'd never give a computer that much power. We'd never do that. We'd never. Oh, shit. Look how We've quickly it. it's happening. <laughs> and you, you know what? I never, I never even so met that quickly. connection. Yeah. It's like we all, this is a proper Star Trek moment, isn't it? Oh, my God, it's a mobile phone. Like, this, is, this is the same type of thing, isn't it? <laughs> a Motorola yeah. that used to flip. Yeah. <laughs> or pretended we were captain. No, no. But yeah, it's um this is this is going really, really fast. Chat GPT, you know, was only introduced to to be open source, to be to be open to everybody about three or four months ago. Mm. And if it can write code, can it write code for itself? <laughs> can it improve itself? And keep improving itself and keep improving itself. Tell you what, I'm not watching Terminator anytime soon. I don't know. (laughs) Well, was it Terminator? Is it Terminator where, um, I I get confused with Total Recall and Terminator, I think it's Terminator, where the the AI thing in the sky was called Skynet? Uh, I think so, yeah. I only, in, I, I'm not really a Terminator the name person. Isn't that the name that Elon Musk used to name all his satellites? And he calls him Yeah, he's a, he's a funny character. I <laughs> won't trust him, really. Um, yeah. It's, it's amazing, it's isn't flying. it? It's flying. It's absolutely flying. Um, in a few months? I, well, my son's... It's only so, like a... My son's it's a only a pool of like three years, isn't so, it? My son writes code for a living. That's what he does. He creates and writes code. And as soon as I did this, and I got my little little boxes working inside Illustrator, I rang him up straight away. <laughs> I've just taken my job. <laughs> Do you always reply what? You can have it, it's shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean... Now, strangely, right, so... This is, this is what we call garbage in, garbage out. Believe it or not, my, my entire career planned out at 13 when you go see the careers officer at school <laughs> yeah you know, when you pick your ops we used to call yeah, options yeah. i don't think yeah i think we're still anymore. they did when i when i did it i can't remember so what my you, you had to it. you had to drop some subjects and and, and major in some subjects and, and yeah. that dictated your life i was obsessed with computers in 1983 mm. so mm. i was i was writing my own stuff i was reading everything you could possibly learn home computers weren't a thing we had to go to go see a carpet manufacturer and he had a, a, a computer <laughs> that basically created the jacquard now as an embroiderer I, I now know what a jacquard is it's like a yeah. punched tape that that tells the stitches oh, right. in a rug um <clears throat> embroidery disc is a jacquard basically all right um if you can, you can remember when there were just holes in pieces of paper but you won't remember that uh <laughs> So, punched tape, punched tape reader. Anyway, <sighs> you couldn't have a computer. It, they were too expensive. So we used to go to a place where they had a computer and they used it to put the stitches in the rugs or to design them. And right. you walk in and this place is a glass cube in the middle of a room, air conditioned. You know how <sighs> to go in it. There are the spinny wheels and the flashy lights that you see on Star Trek. <sighs> And this now. thing was huge. It ate electricity. Everything was spinning. There were three people around it, and all it did was put the stitches in rugs. Oh, and so from there, that was my entire career. That's what I was going to do. I have no idea where I was going with the story, by the way. <laughs> but that's what I was going to do. So I can sort of – I understand a little bit of how the computers work and how the, how the coding works and stuff. So I threw – this question that chat GPT and it did this little script and it worked and I said, oh, I want to make a change to it. I want to add something to it. I added something to it, asked it a question again. It gave me a completely different code. So when, it, when I asked it to do it again, it didn't give me the same code with an addition. It approached it from a completely different angle. Oh, then right. when I asked it again in another session to 
to do the same thing but added something else on it, I got a, a third version of the code. Oh, right. Now, I don't understand enough of the code to know which is good and which is bad. Yeah, but I'm with you. eventually, I added that much stuff to it that it stopped working as a code. Right. <laughs> I don't know where we're going with the story of starting in computers, but that was my whole sort of, I was going to do, I was going to do two years at college, advanced computer science. Yeah. And from college, I was going to do a two-year degree as a, a national diploma in computer science, and then another two years as a higher national diploma, and then right at the end, a bachelor. Um, and the whole thing was all planned out for me. And then I saw somebody printing T-shirts with a titty like that, and I thought, oh, that's for me. That was, that's the one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know. So, what's your favourite sci-fi film? Oh, God, how long have we got? All right. All right. Um, anything sci-fi, I'm, I'm straight in there. Um, yeah. As far as series or films, films, I like a space opera. A and, space and I, opera? So space opera is not singing. I'm going to say, I've never heard of this. But I read a lot, but I don't read. I listen to them on audio books because I'm always traveling yeah. or driving or somewhere. Yeah, um, what well, you ought to do, ask chat space to, opera, to so, give you a summary. Uh, <laughs> Save your hours. Star Wars, Star Trek, those are space operas. Oh, uh, so it means it's set, more than one. It, it's a big, vast universe, and you there are parts of it that you can. So you can. I'll read like a a, a book that's got it ten, ten parts. Yeah, it's got ten parts. You know, and, and one bit might be this timeline, this timeline, and this timeline. So. I've got a really weird taste on, on, on sci-fi, but anything futuristic, anything steampunk, anything... Um, anything I would never have guessed. No? <laughs> no. No. If you'd have told me, if you'd said to me, what do you think my favourite film is? Disney. <laughs> uh, I don't know what to guess, but I don't, I don't think I'd have got, I don't think I would have ticked you as a massive sci-fi buff. So there's not many films I would watch again. I'm not a re-watcher. I don't, I don't like no. watching a film again. There's one yeah. film I will always watch again whenever it's on, and that's Total Recall, the, the Arnie version. All right. Is that, that one where she's got three boobs? Yeah, that was one of my favourites. <laughs> uh, but now when I watch it, it looks a little bit old-fashioned and stuff now. Uh, Blade, Runner, Blade Runner, the, the, the 2049 one, that was good. Altered Carbon as a series, they're absolutely awesome. Uh, I've, got, I've got loads. I've got... I think I'm about 350 bucks on my phone. Really? <laughs> on the, on the, on the Audible. I, I'm, so you're I'm, just a little I'm, bit into it. Like you, you, you're quite into it, are you? Quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. Beard yeah, of books. Yeah, my, my Audible's full. Um, <laughs> I, I'll I'll use the credit that I get free, and I'll buy another credit, or I'll steal Michelle's yeah. credits. Yeah. Because <laughs> you can gift credits. So I'm I'll, really I'll pick a book my... that's an audio book that's at least 24 hours long. Oh, and yeah, usually part of a trilogy and part of a part yeah. of something like that. I'm not a sci-fi person, to be honest. Um, the only one, the only sci-fi sort of series I like is Alien and Prometheus. Okay, that's sort of my sci-fi. Yeah, the original dumb, Alien, dusted, absolute awesome film. The original Alien um, with Sigourney Weaver and yeah, and John Hurt. Come out with yeah, stuff. well. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. And, um, was it two or three that was a bit? Oh, they get carried away, don't they? <laughs> they start to do a little bit. Sequels, they start to turn into a robot. Yeah, it it makes. Um, it's when they try and make the story fit the film. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What yeah was I the one I watched. Ready, Ready Player One was a good one. I watched anything set in the future, basically. Mm. Mm. Oh, well, we learn something new every day, don't we? Yeah. Learn something new about T-shirt printing. I'd love to. You know, I look forward to these segments because you don't run anything past me. Glad somebody I've got, does. I've got no <laughs> idea whether it's been fact-checked or not. So no. let's go for it. I had to pull this up about 58 minutes ago. Um, in Japan, there is a type of T-shirt printing known as Chindogu, which translates to weird twill 
weird tool. Tool? As in, like, a tool. 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 And uh, so Chindogo T-shirts feature functional gadgets and inventions that are integrated into the fabric, such as a solar-powered fan or a built-in backpack. And I happen to have an example, another example. Want to show and tell? Uh, yeah, I want to show you. Screen. How do I share a file? File. What's a presentation? Oh, no, I have to upgrade my plan. Oh, as if I don't pay enough. It's <laughs> off me. Uh... So let's get this open. There we go. Oh, no. Right, so window. No, not that one. I nearly, we nearly entered the matrix, we nearly shared us. <laughs> so here's an example of a Chindogo t shirt. So can you see? So shirt. it's a back scratcher shirt. So if you've got an itch on your back, you can tell someone the coordinates and they'll get it spot on for you. <laughs> That's good, isn't it? I could do with that. Yeah, I can't reach my back at all. So I could do with that. <laughs> unuseless inventions. Yeah, it's funny because the fact came up as useless. And then when you Google it, unuseless. You call it unuseless. Yeah. And to be honest, I didn't see that many T-shirts. I did see a baby with, um, like, fluff on her arms and her legs so that she could mop the floor. She, she crawled <laughs> along it. Okay. Get me one of them. Get me one of yeah. them babies. I don't want a shirt. <laughs> it's a robot back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the little thing. But now then, I think Corey's got one of them, you know, from Floodway. I'm sure he yes. has one of those. Yeah, yeah that robot back, yeah. <laughs> well... So I, I, I was a little bit obsessed with these sort of things at one point. Um, little useful inventions. A long time ago. It must be. Jeez, it must be 90s. There was the the musical T-shirt, if you remember that. I remember a T-shirt where it had flashing lights and it was like the the music bars. It would like yeah. move to the music. There was that and one. That was and there's one where you, you sort of like, you went like that. Across a guitar string, and it oh, played right. a tune. Oh, right! Wow! Yeah, flipping hell. And um, there's a place not far from Magna um, that are doing the um, conductive transfers and conductive ink. Right. So this is using conductivity to measure either temperature or heart rate or. Uh, blood pressure, and when you touch, certain things happen. Right. And I've always thought that from 20 years ago, I thought this is going to be huge. People are going to be having interactive T-shirts and wearable T-shirts giving wearable data. Yeah. It never, it never happened. <laughs> I've never seen it on Dragon's Den. I'm sure somebody went on Dragon's Den with it. Yeah, the, the conductive, um, conductive ink's been out a while. So you basically, and, and I can I, I can remember printing the t-shirts because in, in the sort of like in the bottom bit here was a little pocket for a square nine volt battery. Yeah, yeah. And you because you had to take that battery out if you wanted to wash it. Ah, right. Yeah. So you put the battery in, and then you, 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 your t-shirt would do whatever it's supposed to do: singing, dancing, moving, whatever. And then when you wanted to How? wash your shirt, you took that out and put that in there. How does that even work? I don't do you, know. How do you do I, that? Th I thought they were going to be absolutely huge, but it's been 20 years and I haven't seen them since. So. Don't have to cough. But the, the place in Barnsley, Sheffield, Rotherham ish, mm -hmm. that, um, that have gone down the conductive ink route, they're doing medical stuff. Well, so you know, when you said that, the like first thing knee, I thought. Knee was... support and ankle support, weightlifters especially that will give you a report of how much stress you're putting on one oh, wow. one part of your body. Well, my thought was a T-shirt for people with heart problems. Mm. Um, so if it's like, because I'm sure, pretty sure you mentioned that it can measure your heartbeat. Yeah. Like if somebody's like in, in red, you'd have a T-shirt. So if somebody's passed out in the street, first thing we can see is the T-shirt says, I'm having an heart attack. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just, I'm having an just... heart attack and all I got is well a T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Mine would just flash up indigestion. 
<laughs> Don't call a doctor. Get me some Gabby scum. <laughs> He's just having a food coma. Don't worry about him. He'll be right. <laughs> Oh, I, think, God. I think the reason they don't work is, is these, you know. We, yeah, we, we, we went straight to um, putting all that information in one place as a wearable. Mm. When I was running before these existed, uh, it was a heart rate monitor, so it's like an elastic band. Yeah, it went, went on here, to. Uh, and that would give you the the detail. It was a the, the, like a pebble you put in your shoe. Uh, oh, the, right. the Nike one. You remember the Nike thing? You used to used to put it into your shoe. You had a no, little space where no. you put the, the, the pedometer thing. Oh wow! Uh, but now we've got most of that on our phones, on an Apple Watch, on a on a running watch. You know, and and we just don't need a T shirt that says "Call Call Nine Nine Nine." I'm having a <laughs> I'm having a coronary. <laughs> we've lost. Well, please return to the pub. <laughs> Thing, things always come around full circle, don't they? So when when Rave Scene gets back into here, oh, I'm sure they'll make a comeback. <laughs> really? I don't yeah. think Rave Scene's coming back. You reckon? With smiley faces. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, where would you fire? I mean, Wakey. Wakefield. Shake, shaky Wakey. Famous for Wakey well, Wines. Do you know what else it's famous for? So... I've no idea where you're going with this. Things that I think would come up if you Googled Wakefield. Um, it's a city because it's got a cathedral. Because that's the difference between you know the difference between a town and a city. Is that right? I never. I just thought it was based on the size. No, a city population. Is your well? A town, well, a, a town doesn't see. have a cathedral. What about Selby Abbey? That's a town. Is Abbey broken? That's that's got you there, hasn't it? Is Abbey broken? Um, what of them piss? What of them chips looking like? <laughs> covered in piss. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a cathedral, is it? It's an abbey. Better than a cathedral. It's an abbey. Whitfield's got right, a cathedral. So if you've got a cathedral, you're a city. If you've got a church, you're a city. You're a town. Is Whitby? A, is Whitby a, a city? Don't know. You might want to do some fact checking. Checking the authority line. I'm. It's not often I get the opportunity to piss on your chips. I know, my chips but I'm are quite all damp. enjoying it, actually. My, my chips are damp. Let me Google <laughs> this, because I'm pretty sure. <laughs> what makes a city? Come on, Google, do your stuff. In the UK, city status in the UK can be associated with having a cathedral or a university. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, right, right, I see. Definitely yeah, a cathedral right. or a universe. Well, I'll give I'll give you half of it. You can have half of a credit. credit. Okay. I, did, I never knew that. So I never knew it's that. famous for that. What else is it famous for? Um, Christ. It's got a prison, category A prison. Bronson were near at one point, weren't they? Yeah, uh, pretty much all the IRA were in there at one point. Um, what else have you got famous for? It's the home of onward Christian soldiers. <laughs> yeah, that might be on my list. Really? No, but I think I've seen that. That's a song, isn't it? Yeah. It's a, Actually, it's you know a, what? I feel like you might have told me about. It's, it's a hymn. That's why I recognise it. It's a hymn mm. that you used to sing at school. Come yeah. on, then. What's on your list? So, what is to believe? What is to be? What is to be believed? The smallest pub in England. Which I'm surprised you didn't get that one. Which, and what's <laughs> and it's it called? Measures the little one. I think I'm going to call bullshit on that. And the pub is six foot by seven and can hold a maximum of four people. I'm going to call bullshit on it. So you're because it's pub related in my to town, find and, it, and, and you don't know it. about it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and I've also been to a pub that also that also claims to be the smallest pub in England. This is, a Craig, that this is a Craig story. Oh, well, this will be good. Buckle in, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> can I have a wee? Because this is going to be good, this. I'm going yeah, for a wee. Can, Speaking of pissing on chips. Yeah. I'm going for a wee, and then I want to see a Craig story. <laughs> right. Everybody buckle up. <laughs> so, anyway, according to Google, smallest pub in England is called The Nutshell, and it's in Surrey. So. But... 
I was working uh, in um, Margate. So there's a printer in Margate that, uh, that I go to every every year or so uh, to help them with some stuff. And it just so happens that Craig lives in Herne Bay, which is the next town along to Margate. So obviously, I said to him, you know, look, I'm in your area. Let's meet up for a beer. I'm here all week. Oh, yeah, it'd be great, it'd be great, it'd be great. As a side story, he's been up in, um, in, uh, in Barnsley all week and I haven't been for a beer with him. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I said, yeah, sure, let's meet up for a beer. He said, right, okay, tomorrow night um, we'll meet for a beer and I'll take you to the smallest pub in England. Oh, that'd be great. Awesome. Well done, Craig. So it's about a 20-minute drive. So I'm texting Craig all day long. Um, where are you going to be? Oh, yeah, 7 o'clock. Be there. Here's the here's the GPS. Okay, no worries. That's off. I, I like being early. Half past six. So I, I pull up to this little pub, and I can see it. It's fucking tiny. It's a it's a shop yeah. window, basically, just a shop window. That's all it is. And um, ten to seven, no Craig. Seven o'clock, no Craig. Text him. Oh, where are you? No Craig. No answer. Ring him. Goes to voicemail. Okay, it's quarter past seven. I've been sat here like a lunatic. Actually, outside, stood outside this pub. Yeah. I can't stand outside much longer. Craig's told me that he's a regular. He knows the people who own the bar. He, <laughs> they, they know him really well. He's, you know, it's his favourite place to go. He's always there. He loves it. Build, really build it up. Smallest place, really friendly. It's awesome. Okay. So 20 minutes now, I'm outside, freezing. Like, yeah. I'm looking at a pub. To my left is a massive pub, bright lights. I can smell the food in the kitchen. I'm not eating because we're eating. I'm eating with Craig. And then in front of me is a shop window, which says small <sighs> pub in England. Okay, well, I might as well wait inside and have a beer waiting for Craig. I like a beer. So I'll, I'll wait inside <laughs> for Craig. I open the door. Yeah. I hit someone. And there's five people in. I make six, it can only really take four. So it's all like, oh, excuse me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. And they were all talking and they all went silent and so they're all this far away from my face. Flipping out. So there's like a little, there's a guy stood there. Well, he must be the barman. Yeah. Oh, yeah, can I help you? Oh, oh fuck, I'm in now. I can't, I can't walk out now. I'm in. Yeah. I'm deep. I've shut the door behind me. <laughs> I'd have to move three people to open the door. Yeah, I'll have a pint of bitter, please. Okay. And off he disappears into into what, what, what looks like somebody's front room. Disappears. Yeah. Comes back with a glass of A brown liquid. I didn't no. see him pull it. I didn't see him where he took it from. I just put it down on the floor. I thought, this guy's not going to take a card for this. So I'm no. looking around for cash. Found some cash. Gave him the cash. Have you got anything smaller than a tenner? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it gives me the change. The guy starts talking rugby. <sighs> I've got one here, one there. And, you know, I, I can I know what they've had for dinner. They're that close to me. Oh. I can smell the breath. <laughs> you know what I mean? And they're talking about rugby. Yeah. You all right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we play rugby up north. Yeah, oh, I'm from up north. Yeah. Oh, is it? Is it Union? No, League. <laughs> Come, nothing. Ah, oh, right. And then they start talking to themselves. And what brings you down here? I'm, 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 I'm meeting Craig. You know Craig. Craig? Never heard of him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Craig, Craig, Craig Longwood from from that road. He comes in here all the time. You mean Big Craig plays rugby? No, this, Craig, <laughs> this Craig's about three foot two and looks like Penfold from Danger Mouse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, we've never heard of him. Right. Well, I can't ring Craig because they're practically here. Yeah. So I'm texting like this. Where the fuck are you? <laughs> All right, yeah, rugby. Yeah, rugby. <laughs> rugby. <laughs> and now I've drunk my pint. I really don't want another one. But, good up. No sign of Craig. It's now eight o'clock. It's an hour late. Where the fuck <laughs> are you? Bastard. Send. <laughs> I'm in this fucking pub. 
and I <laughs> old men's breath in my face. So uh, try not to let them see what I'm typing. And then he, still no answer. It's now quarter to nine, and I get a text back on my way. Fuck off. And now I'm driving, so I can't have another drink. There's no soft drinks in this uh, pub. I've got this much beer left. And, <laughs> and then I'll, I'll be two minutes. In walks Craig. Not 17 people out of way, and I can't get in and all stuff like that. Oh, yeah, you're all right, yeah, yeah, you're all right, yeah, yeah. It's good, this, isn't it? Yeah, oh, it's great, this, isn't it? It is great, yeah, yeah. I'll have a bite, please. Can you have a bite, Johnny? No. I'll have a Too water. late, I'll have a bugger. Ah, it's right, okay. Yeah, yeah, well, we'll have a bite. Smallest pub in England, this. It's good, isn't it? Oh, it's shit. <laughs> I, can't, I can't even lift my elbow. <laughs> and then the barman pronounces, right, we're, we're closing at nine, lads. Let's up up. I'm looking at Craig and I want to kill him and I can't say anything because yeah. everybody's in the same headspace, you know. We're all occupying yeah. one square metre. Uh, uh, <laughs> and so I'm like, Are you hungry? I said, Yeah. But you're not gonna get anything to eat here. No, there's a pub over the road. I said big pub, it'd be great, we'll have some other to eat over there. You, you just redeemed yourself, Craig. You've just redeemed yourself. We pour out of this bar into the, into the street, and I'm like, you little fucker. What did you do? You just fucking left me in there with rugby guys. Stuff like that. I'm sure three of them touched me inappropriately. <laughs> you bastard. Come on, you need to buy me a pint in here. Goes over the road. Stop doing food. I'm fucking starving. I'm 40 minutes away from home. I can't have another beer. And I've stood there with Craig, who's just like, <laughs> and we got a council meeting. <laughs> you were where? That council meeting. He went on a bit, sorry. <laughs> were it an emergency council meeting? No, no, it's already been planned. Did it start at seven? Yeah. The same time you arranged to meet me in this world's smallest pub? Yeah, but I knew it won't be long. <laughs> Craig, I'm going to go now. See you later. Oh, we're going already? <laughs> Don't contact me for a few months. I need to calm down. <laughs> Strang strangely, I mean, he's a really nice guy. It's just, it just, some of the stuff he does is just crazy. Um, and I'm doing something next month, and he'll be there, and it'll be in a foreign country. And I swear to God, it's just the, the funniest thing ever. <laughs> he once lost somebody's passport that he was travelling with. <laughs> group, group well, of... I mean, I, I I don't know this person, but I know the last person I would trust with my passport would be him. <laughs> so he didn't have it. He didn't have his passport. Forum went through security, gets to passport control. One of them had got a passport. I got my passport. Have you got a passport? No. Have you got it? No. Did you pick it up? No. <sighs> Go back to security. Looking through the X-ray tapes, looking through the tapes of security, got the head of security down. This lost passport must be bought my X-ray machine. Wants to get it apart, going absolutely crazy. The other two guys have stripped everything out, and Craig's just sat there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Craig, have you got my passport? No, 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 no definitely. Not. And she's just back. I got it. Absolutely, I got it. No. Another half an hour passes, and I've got the head of security of Los Angeles Airport. Going through security tapes saying, look, I'm sorry, but we saw you put it in at this end and we can't see you take it out at this end. What's well, in the machine, they need to take the machine apart. I can't fly, I can't get home without my passport. Going absolutely crazy. And then Craig just went, oh, it's here, look at my bucket. <laughs> <laughs> what? Man. <laughs> I thought it were mine, but it's yours. Look, I've got two yours and mine. Look at that. That's that funny, that. <laughs> oh, God. I'd die. This particular person is not known for his patience. We both know him. We both know who it is. He's not known for his patience or tolerance right. of others. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he wanted to kill him. He's rung me and told oh. me what's happened. And I'm like, don't hit him, don't hit him. So no, I'm going to go sit in... The first class lounge where he can't get me, he can't get in. I'm going to sit and wait for me plane in there. So he goes and sits in the first class lounge, top, top like first tier of Virgin Air. Yeah. Sits down, gets himself a drink, tries to relax about the whole thing of him and holding up Los Angeles Airport and, and digging to the bottom of an X-ray machine and getting the head of security, trying to calm down and breathe through it. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, it's nice in here, isn't it? Oh. He's blagged his way into first class. <laughs> blagged his way in. You know, you can't, I can't get into these places. Blagged his way in, sat down. Oh, look, all this is free, isn't it? Oh, this is all right, isn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I could go on with that, Craig, for a long time, but this is supposed to be a screen printing. But, um, yeah. I feel like Craig is a really lovely person deep down, but I couldn't go with him. <laughs> it's, like, it's, it's like having a 12 or 13 year old with you. They're yeah. all right, and they say some funny stuff, but eventually they just get on your tits when you're, you're just dragging them around for a while. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my, my escapades in America with, with Craig are legendary. Absolutely legendary. He's on the fucking roof, is just what we... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's oh, the title of the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> right. Is there, is there any way we could possibly drag this back to screen for <laughs> Yeah, sorry. Now, were you, were, you were fast-facting about Wakefield. Is that all you had? Um, for birthplace of the first ever rhubarb festival. Oh, a rhubarb festival still goes on. We are we live in what we call the rhubarb triangle. Ah, no, I have heard of that. Yeah, it's That's the best place for growing rhubarb in the in England. Don't like rhubarb. Do you like rhubarb? <laughs> no, <laughs> it's got to be dipped in sugar before I can eat it. <laughs> that crumble. Ooh, I can eat that. No. Um, the birthplace of famous artist Anne Lister. It's not that Where fucking famous, is she? Because I've never heard of her. No. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, according to this, uh, lived in the 19th century and is often referred to as the first modern lesbian. I, I'd like that on my... Yeah, that's a good thing to have on your gravestone. <laughs> the first modern lesbian. Died in the 19th century. <laughs> Oh, she was so hip for a time. <laughs> oh, she, what a trendsetter. <laughs> what an episode. We've literally done nothing on screen print at all. <laughs> Lesbians, rhubarb. Greg. Oh, and the Christ. world's smallest pub. Which turns out to be a lie. <laughs> Oh, flipping! Don't I? I ain't got no. This is this is why I need to get out and do a bit more work. And uh, ne- next week I'm I am booked up. I'm back to working again next week, so we will have some. Um, Where are you working at? Do you think? So, oh, this, you know? this, this might be interesting next week. Um, <laughs> so is, don't leave us. Come back, please. <laughs> this is um, <laughs> this is a place I've been to a few times now. Uh, Modernising the screen room, basically. So this place has modern hey, modern printing bit, equipment, mate. but the the screen room is sort of stuck in the nineteen eighties. Um, Trilock and mountain films, films and mountain films. Mm. So we've looked at options for direct to screen, DTS, CTS, and there are basically three options. <sighs> I've just done a, a, an article on this. The three options are print with um, inkjet directly onto the screen, print with wax, wax. directly onto the screen, print with la- uh, etch right with laser, with, with light yeah. and laser directly onto yeah. the screen. So out of those three, direct to laser, 100 grand. Laser to screen, it's a 100 grand investment. Uh, although watch this space, might be a cheaper. Um, writing with wax writing with wax is so we put wax in one side the heat changes it to a liquid we spit it out through holes as it cools it hits the cold screen and gets you the best resolution of dots and uh, a perfect no dot gain whatsoever so the, the technically one of the higher up methods of imaging onto a screen is uh, wax is better but would you but, put wax below laser Laser wax, or would you not? That's a damn good question, Danny. That I don't have enough experience on laser to find out. So I would put laser higher because the resolution I can hold on a laser is something like 2400 dpi. The wax tops out around about 600 dpi. 
So the yeah. laser resolution is higher than what's coming off your Epson film printer at the minute. Yeah, to the Where's power the wax of two, isn't... which gives you a cleaner edge on solid vector work. Yeah. So for me, yeah, I would say that laser is, is ahead. But you know, when you when you factor everything in like cost, then it's quite low because it's it's prohibitive because yeah. of cost. Um, way up. The the wax systems are about fifty grand now, and the the inkjet systems, the inkjet systems we can split into two. No. I'm going to be careful with my description, so I don't want to be derogatory. But we've basically got high end and low end. So we've got yeah. um, we've got high end M and R I image, uh, the, the Kiwo system, the Mantle system. These come in around about sixty to eighty thousand, depending on whether you get a good deal or not. Yeah. We get spread as the as the ink hits the emulsion, it spreads a little. Now we can chuck yeah. that back in the software, so it's not a major issue. Yeah, as long as we know what the spread yeah. is. Um, yeah. Reliability probably better than wax, um, but there's still a cost of a consumable, uh, yeah. and we've, we've still got this sort of resolution issue. Now, the lower end of that is a 15 to 20 grand unit, which um, is a lot slower. So all of the above will image a screen a normal 23 by 31 in around about 60 seconds. The laser's about 120 seconds, about two minutes. The, um, the inkjet and the wax are about 60 seconds. Then we step down to this. The lower end, the lower end, it uses No, I'm going to use entry level. I don't, like, I don't like lower end. Entry the entry level. level. I'm going to go entry It's using level. ink. It still uses wax. ink. But it's not as sophisticated. It's not a reservoir. It's like a head that uh, that you plug in and can pull out, like a like a like, yeah. like a printer head. Um, I was going to say it's almost like a large format on a that just goes. It's on a bed, the screen. and it's on a bed. Almost like a CNC machine. Just with it's a almost like a it. CNC machine on a bed. So you've got a bridge, a bridge print head, and the bridge print head comes down, prints, goes back up, goes home. Now the whole process can take six minutes to yeah. make a screen. So obviously, if, if making screens quickly is your main reason for investing in computer screen, this is not for you. But if no. you want to get rid of the carrier sheets, the films, the glass, the vacuum, and all the associated shit that goes with it, like pinholes, like you know, bits of screen goblins buggy stuck to films and um, all these things then you know computer to screen and you want to get into it this is a good entry level now yeah we'll we'll do an episode when it's in um i tested this unit this exact unit um 2016 and i said then i don't like it well, yeah. the reason i don't like it is not because it doesn't make screens well it's because the workflow is really not intuitive the mm -hmm. time every time it prints a screen first of all a little laser comes down and checks for obstructions that takes about yeah. two minutes so the time yeah. i didn't like the quality was good the placement was good the only thing i didn't like was the actual workflow of it you were sort of like um, yeah dragging files right clicking files bringing up a menu selecting from a sub menu pressing print wait until something happened and do something else. It was really clunky workflow. It wasn't just control P. Mm. Um, and so when it came time to recommend to this customer moving to direct to screen, those were my exact sort of like words that I used. You know, you've got these you've got this sliding scale of, of laser here and the flatbed printer yeah. here. And yeah. you know, depending on what you want to spend and, and how many screens you make a day. And I reckon they do 10 screens a day, if that. So, uh, well, maybe not. So, so it's time not, not a big issue. No, it's not a big issue. No. I mean, but, imagine, uh, if I, imagine I'd be pretty chuffed to bits of it. Because well, it would surely, you, surely you vastly them. improve my registration accuracy. You can rent them. You don't have to buy them. I never know that. Yeah. I'll just start looking into this little option for a number of things. So... so uh, 
This is the second generation now. So the one I tested in 2016 doesn't exist now. It's now the second generation. Yeah. Um, You've been told it's better, haven't you? I've been told it's better. But you know the rule with salesmen? If the lips are moving, they're lying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So truth will tell. And, and it's a... I know the owner of the, the, the company that does it, and, and it's a massive gamble for him because he knows if I think it's shit, I'm going to tell everybody it's shit. Because I don't get paid from them. So, you know, if I think it's crap, I'm going to tell them it's crap. Yeah, but you're also objective, and if you think it's great, you'll tell everybody it's great. Oh, the flip side so is, if I think this is now a good solution for an entry-level uh, small-size printer, then yeah. um, then I think that, yeah, this, this is a good solution. Um, yeah. If it works, fantastic. It's, it's a win-win for him. Yeah. It's just if it doesn't work, I'm going to tell everybody it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, so yeah. what are you saying? You're, getting, you're going to get a chance to play with it at some point? Is that it's what you're trying to tell me? It's going in on Friday, yeah. So. Oh, right. And this is coming to, oh, this is coming to the shop at your I'll, I'll be, yeah. next week? This, yeah, so uh, right, now I'm with you. Monday, next week, I'm at your favourite place, Silent but Deadly. Oh, are you? <laughs> yeah. I'm coming for them. New, really. new one. <laughs> the new one. Oh, the mega, the mega factory. Mega factory. Um, they, they must be on. Um, they've got world's strongest man coming up in about two weeks, so they must be. They must have been pushing out some shirts recently. Yeah, they, they do it in, well in advance. They're very, very organised. Yeah. Gamp charts and stuff like that. Um, then in Birmingham, doing something else, and then. Um, then I'm back to this place that's got the, uh, uh, the, the computer screen for an in-depth. Okay, let's have a look at the, the workflow. Can we make this work? Is it getting better? Because the guy making screens, the guy making screens is crap. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I can really say. He's just not interested yeah. in it. You know, he just performs the task. He just goes through the routine. It just, if it's, just, it's just a job. He just does the task. He's, he doesn't do a bad job. He's just not interested in anything, like improving anything. Um, and his backup, his replacement, is 82 years old. Wait a now. Who comes in, doing three, comes in three days a week, fit as a lop. Years. Bags of experience. Can use this this method, this system of mounting carrier plates better than any computer I've ever seen. He's awesome. Yeah, he's, he's super got 80 odd years of years, it, that's right. Because of all the years of experience that he's got. Um, God. My problem is integrating a new technology with a, an 82-year-old who and it's, 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 sees no it's, reason to improve. The system's not broken. Why are you fixing it? Yeah, but also, I don't mean this in a morbid way. I don't mean it in a morbid way, but I mean, surely due to retire. Yeah, and he wants, and he wants to spend less time there. He doesn't, he doesn't want to spend all his time there. He wants to retire. So this is the, the next logical step, is to put something in that, that's going to help in that. Um, I'm, I'm going to have resistance from a few people involved in the process, like the artist and the printer uh, and the screen maker, in that, what was wrong with the system? The system, I thought the system had worked. We, we made it work. What was wrong with the system? Why are you changing it? And yeah, they're changing I... it on my advice. So I've got to justify that my yeah. advice wasn't bullshit, you know, yeah. and, and we've got to make it work. Uh, and we, we covered this probably four weeks in a row. If you have the skill level, of, a, of an operator, and it's high, nothing I can suggest to replace with new technology is going to make it better. It's actually going to make it worse first. We yeah, go all the way back to, we go back to the girls in France, been doing it for 20 years, who are absolutely awesome at it, setting up on them now with a hammer. They're better than almost any registration system I've seen. Um, the girl in America who could throw the six for the job in for six pieces and it took her like less time than it took me to wash a squeegee. Um, these things present me with a problem of, well, I'm going to rip apart your system and replace it with an inferior one. Tell me how that's better. Yeah, but, 
sometimes you have to take a step back to take three steps forward. And that's all it is. And you're, you're introducing new systems, new machinery. The long-term gain life is, easier is that the lack term. of uh, reliance on one operator. That's the long-term gain. Yes, that would be the killer. I always use the get hit by a bus thing. You know, what would you do if that, that girl got hit by a bus? We'd have to stop printing. Nobody else knows how to do it. What would you do mm. if the two ladies suddenly retired, just decided to retire? Well, nobody else can do it like that. Right, okay. So the new technology will get you to approximately their level with zero skill. Yeah. Yeah. We're just going to follow a routine and press the button, follow the routine, press the button, follow the routine, press the button. Now your placement skills have been taken out of the equation. Now your ability to judge has been taken out of the equation. And we're just... Follow the routine. What's the process? Get the screen, clip it in, press print. Six minutes later, take out the screen, print it here, get the next screen, press print. Go back over here, start developing. So that whole process now has to be relearned. And people don't like change, do they? Not everybody likes change. It's scary, isn't it? I th- Change for change's sake. It's outside your comfort zone, isn't it? Change to improve is always good, but change just for change's sake, that, I don't like that. No, no, sometimes you're changing it for the sake of change. It's silly, but nothing good nothing good ever comes of comfort, does it? Being comfy, does it? You've just got to step outside your comfort zone. and If things don't bit. alter, they'll stop as they are. <laughs> no, I think they'll go backwards. If, you just, if, you're if everybody else in, goes racing you're forward, going backwards. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a bit like, here's a question. Let's, let's have one last question. Okay. If, you're, if you feel like you've uh, yeah. got everything off your chest that you need to. Um, so it's a, it's a quick question. Does automating take away the art or the craft, the craft of screen print? I, I've got an answer to that. I know my answer, but I'll let you see what you think. Yes. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> That's not what I expected you to say, but... Yes, it does. Um, does it make you any less of a craftsman? But to we, me, we, right, we, listen we, to this. Are you any less of a joiner if you use a Makita mitre saw instead of using an actual saw? I, and yes, I, I think you are. I, I've got a, a, an elderly relative of mine who's a, an old bench hand joiner and, and can cut, you know, dovetails by hand without measuring. Uh, and I've got somebody who, who can also do it, but uh, has got a tool that just cuts them for him. Mm. So I think the guy who can do it by hand is more skillful, therefore more has a higher level of craftsmanship. Um, I, I can yeah, go that's, and, that's, I've got that's another a relative who's it. a, a painter and decorator. This painter and decorator did eight years apprenticeship and can French polish and rag roll and do all these techniques. I've got another one that did six months at technical college. And they both earn the same money. Now, one's a craftsman and one's a tradesman. And, and yeah, this is, I guess. We, we go to you again. You know, where do you sit in that? What are you? Are you a craftsman or are you a production person? Where you are, you're a craftsman. You know, you're, you're, you're perfecting your craft. Yeah. And, and the shops I go to, the mass production outlets. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think guess they're, they're I guess almost you could look two at different it. things. Yeah, they are two different things. You, but you could look at it this way as well. You could say, is there a, is there a ceiling to what you can achieve without tools at your disposable? Like a, like a joiner can do all these crazy dovetail joints and so many techniques, etc., etc. You can build whatever he wants, but he can do it. He can do it in a. It can, it's got to take him a while to do it. And the machinery will just open up more possibilities for him to do bigger uh, yeah, and better things in a much bigger does, time. It reduces the time scale that you need to get to that level. Um, you know, an eight-year apprenticeship to get to that level, or six months at, at technical college. It, it's that it reduces that 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 time scale that you need. Um, if you understand the whole process first, and then start yeah. using the tools, yes. If you walk straight, I give you a. A classic example just, just refers purely to me. 1987, I start printing on an automatic machine 
and I'm fucking good at it, and I'm awesome at it. We fast forward five years. I've been there five years. I'm top of my game. I am. I make these machines sing and dance, and all the prints are gorgeous. My spoil levels are zero, and my yeah. production levels are high. I am awesome. I go walk into a place that is a um, a backstreet printer, let's say a one man band, and I haven't got a fucking clue how to make a screen. I have never made a posi using a camera. I haven't even. No. Had to, I've never had to strip my own screen. So using the tools I had, which was a machine that kept printing, perfect. This guy yeah. squeegee in my hand. And I'm like, is it the rubber bit that goes down or the wood bit? <laughs> What's this for? And, you know, I had, I had to pull a squeegee by hand and, and try and make it look like I knew what I was doing. Um, How many print shops do you think you'll walk into that have served the apprenticeship? that have been set up by somebody, maybe similar to me, who's done years and years and years on your manual and he's built up a bit at a time, bit at a time. I mean, eventually he's got the automatic machinery. Or on the other hand, how many shops have you walked in? Well, how many shops have you walked into where they've just got enough money behind them to just get out gear and just crack on? And I, what I'm do you say it's detrimental? Yeah, I'm a bit biased. Or is it positive? I, I get called in. More to set up shops to places that have the money but no idea than I do to places that have all the idea but no money. All right, so the people that ring me, the, yeah, the people that ring me for my advice are the guys that have got right. Okay, we've got five hundred grand, guys. Uh, where's that? Yeah. Where's machine one going? Where's machine two going? Okay, and we put the dryer in the middle. And what's this room for? Oh, she screams. What do we need that for? Recycling your screens. Oh, okay. All right, yeah. And, and yeah. so I, I've got more interaction with those kind of guys yeah. than the guys that have been doing it for 20 years and have built up such a good business that now they're buying an auto. And yeah, oh, that they've, makes sense. They've had an auto and now they're buying a reclaim. So yeah. those, those guys tend not to ask for my help or advice. No, no, that makes sense. I suppose but it's... But lately, uh... The, I would say it's... 60% brand new build, 40% exist, no existing wanting to improve. Oh, that's because of Chippy T. <laughs> <laughs> Improving your clientele. It is, it is, definitely, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Right, well, on that note, on that let's bugger off and get some tea. Yeah, we're going to get some tea. It's. Um, I've it's, got some bleeding screens to court now. It's fine. <laughs> Remember, five elephants. Thought you'd be going faster than five elephants. No, I'm a, I'm a, I am a slow quarter. Okay. You, I don't count elephants, but I just I take my time. I'll tell you what else I do as well. Not only will I court slow, when I flip it round to the other side, I also turn it upside down. And I don't know why. I just In my head, I feel like you're filling the mesh from one direction, and I feel mm. like you're better if you fill the mesh from the opposite direction on the opposite side. Yeah, you're doing it right. It and might that... do nothing, but it's just what I've always no, done. No, no, uh, if you think about it, the, the, the crosses of the mesh, you're pushing up, so you're trapping air in the top corners. You never trap air in the bottom. Yeah. You're pushing yeah. air up into the top. So any pinholes yeah. or breakthroughs you get could come from very small bubbles of air that you Pockets trap in the top corner. To absolutely get yeah. rid of those, you should go slower, number one. But to guarantee getting rid of those, go from top to tail to tail to top. I must admit, I caught a mean screen. <laughs> that's the one That's the one place that um, automatic screen coaters let, let you down. They, they don't allow you to do that. No, and do they not do it at the same time as well, typically? Front and back at the same time, yeah. But that gives good tension. That gives good, good pressure. I, th I think one, I'd One's probably... pushing against the other. And they don't touch each other like that. They All right. They're offset like that. Oh, I like that. That sounds... That so sounds they don't They don't actually mesh together. So they, they don't... No. They don't, one, one blade doesn't push against the other blade. One no, blade, so one blade is above it it, and it? one blade is below. And that's yeah. how you get your tension and pressure. Oh, interesting. I would, I would definitely swap. <laughs> to be honest, no questions asked. I would, I like, I would like to have the feature of choosing my stencil thickness. Mm. I think that, I think having that at your disposal would be a real handy tool, especially when you're printing I... thicker material garments, because it yeah. would be like a thicker stencil will help 
you actually get ink into them all. Basically. I think a consistent thickness is better than trying to dictate a thickness, but to actually have a consistent thickness so that you can then apply some on press parameters and rules. All right. You know, without a shadow of a doubt, that every screen that comes off is X microns thick. Uh, so, so if you're therefore, saying, you you're... know that this blade, this, this special badass blade with two handles, always works with this one. About... And I don't, <laughs> I right. don't have to do anything else with it. I know it always works. Whereas you, you said you were running a job and something didn't look right. Wasn't quite right. Wasn't quite clear in the mesh. So you changed the blade. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And yeah, you do is change the blade. And it worked. Yeah. So you solved the problem. You had the, you had the ability to solve the problem. But yeah. um, it could have been that the screen you were using wasn't as thick as the screen you used the last time when that squeegee blade worked. Yeah, potentially. But, yeah, and, potentially. and unless we measure it or control it, we don't know. We just don't know. No. And can a man, can a human being get that? I, no matter how good I get it, it now consistent, no. I can't, can I? Best, co best screen critic in the world can't do that. Me? No, I can't, no. You're right. That eight, that eight seven year old <laughs> you. <laughs> <laughs> right, tea time. Let's uh, bugger off. Yes. I feel like it's been a good episode. We've we'll not talked about screen we, we, printing, but... It's been well. entertaining. <laughs> it's not been educational, it's just been entertaining. So, um, all that remains to say we is... We need thank to come you. up with some more tips. I need you to come up with some because I'm, I'm me, me chippy T Instagram posting has slapped off a little bit. I'll be honest. So we need to come up with some tips so that I can get some content in in some, between some episodes. Shop packs. Yeah, yeah. Get yeah, everybody else to send some. us their shop packs and we'll post it on chippy T. Yeah, do that. Yeah. We'll create the content for us. Yeah, that's what <laughs> That'd be mean. ideal. Yeah. So a bit like Chat GPT, isn't it? <laughs> Chat GPT. <laughs> Chat GPT. <laughs> I'm going to be released soon. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create my own artificial intelligence. GPT.2. Yeah. 2.0. <laughs> How are we not billionaires, Tony? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> right. All that remains to be said is thank you very much for tuning in, for listening, for putting up with us, for, for riding this ride with us. Uh, that was episode 40, something we thought 40. we'd never even get to. Uh, you have been listening to me, Tony P from Palm Print, and Danny D from Flipping Sweet Print Co. See you next week, I've got. And I'll see the. All the best.